Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time around, it is my review of the 1995 romantic drama, Love Letter. Now, before I get around to sharing more of my thoughts on this film, I want to give a special shout out to Jaya for requesting this review. And if I mispronounced your name, I apologize. Please feel free to correct me if that's the case. Um, and so, yeah, big shout out goes to Jaya for requesting this particular film and if there is another film or tv show or topic that you would like to see me discuss in the future feel free to donate to my paypal the link will be in the video description down below and i will try to get to it as soon as i possibly can now love letter is a japanese production that got a lot of critical acclaim and awards in japan but didn't really seem to get that much praise or notice outside of Japan. And it's a film that I had never heard of until uh, I was requested to check this one out. And it's a part of a genre that I'm not really that big of a fan of. I'm not really that big into romantic dramas. But all of that being said... This film surprised me in terms of its quality. I thought this was a good film. Uh, it's not a movie that I would say is one of my favorites. But I still found a lot of things about this movie to be quite impressive. Uh, for one, it has some absolutely gorgeous cinematography and direction. It's a beautiful looking film. And I appreciated the fact that the narrative was put together in a way that was unique especially when it comes to how the different plots were woven together it was a very different take on this kind of story because it uses a lot of flashbacks and stuff like that but it does it in a way that's very creative and very fresh and uh quite uh brilliant in a lot of ways because it takes a mystery approach with a love story which is different it's different in terms of what you normally see it it just gives you little bits of information throughout the film until it finally reveals uh the truth and the, the reality of of the love story i also like the fact that the film opens up very unorthodox in terms of the way that uh most films of this type tend to start out this starts out with a funeral like it's a very somber beginning it has a very somber tone and then it maintains that throughout but then there's a lot of genuine heart to it and it becomes a sweet film in terms of the storytelling and and the nature of it despite how cold and harsh the the opening of the film is and how a lot of the themes are that are presented in the film's story so the film is directed by uh shunji ey and i thought he did an incredible job with this film this is a wonderful bit of direction uh, this is one of those movies that you could say that every frame is a work of art. Like the way that he worked with uh, the different lighting and the setting, especially the setting. Like this is honestly one of the most impressive moments and series of uh, direction that I've seen when it comes to the setting of winter that takes place where... Pretty much everything is covered in snow and he just shot it in a way that was just gorgeous it was a beautiful film and he may he managed to capture the inherent beauty of winter but also the darkness the the bleakness of winter and he managed to make it something that came across rather seamless like there really wasn't a lot of moments with the direction where you felt like the tone was off or 
uh, oh, like it doesn't really work because you have certain lighting techniques to try to make it seem like it's more uh, this way, but then they do something else to make it seem that way, and there isn't a lot of consistency. There really wasn't anything like that. I felt it had a very consistent look to it, and I, I felt that there were a lot of... Uh, instances where he used the camera in a unique way in terms of how he made it move or how he had the camera showcasing certain elements versus others like it was a really uh great bit of directing a big reason why i like this film is because of the directing i just wanted to see what he had up his sleeve next um yeah it's just a really gorgeous well shot film i mean there's even even the sequences that take place indoors were shot in a way that was very impressive so yeah it's a really terrific film when it comes to the visuals that's why i would recommend this to pretty much any fan of film just to see these visuals at least once i mean there's some visuals that are not only memorable but really do leave their mark i mean the image of a dragonfly in the snow like that's a absolutely beautiful image and there's a lot of uh shots like that throughout the film and he did a good job working with the cast and getting the best possible performances out of them. And overall, I, I, I really think this film features some fantastic direction. Now, the script by uh, Sunji Ey, it's not necessarily on the same level as his directing, but it's close because of how uniquely it weaves its story. Like I mentioned earlier in the in this review so far, it does it in a way that's not your typical setup for this kind of story. It uses the letters as a way to give the audience some breadcrumbs, so to speak, to give them a little taste of the backstory and the history of this character and his relationship with a girl who has the same name as he does so they even that little bit makes it fresh and different the fact that you have these two characters one who is uh, sadly by the beginning of the film already dead and gone because the film starts with his funeral and the other this uh girl who went to junior high with him so you have these characters that really have a connection that is very different and i like the fact that the way the narrative reveals that connection as well as the connection with uh the female um it's it's suki uh fuji and this other woman who was the um fiance or or girlfriend of the male itsuki fuji uh hiroko and i i, I like that dynamic that those two have and i like the the connection that they ultimately do form through letters and through uh different formats and and, and different instances of storytelling it's just a really interesting and intriguing way to put the pieces together and by the end of the film, it actually left me legitimately in tears because it was so tragic when it comes to a love that really never 
was realized or or really known about it was very hidden it was kept in secret until that very moment like that was a really poignant uh bit of uh storytelling and there are some aspects of it that kind of lose me though see the the reason why i don't think the writing is necessarily on the same level of quality as a direction is that it can be a little too hard to follow at times because it's very ambitious and it's trying to do all these different things with different time periods and these different characters as well as trying to show one love love story and how it was beginning to bud without really a lot of the people involved knowing about it except for uh one character in this instance the other one doesn't know about it until the end of the film so you have that going on and then you have this other this other budding relationship that's also starting to form with with uh one of the other main characters hiroko and that leads to some moments where you kind of it's not the it's not really that you're not as invested in the plot. Well, no, actually, that really is a good way to put it. You're not as invested in the plot when it's trying to establish one relationship over the other, because the other relationship with the letters and the history and the two uh, Itsuki uh, uh, Fujis that's a lot more interesting than the relationship between Hiroko uh, and uh, this other character. Uh, I believe it's... I think it's... Yeah, it's Akiba. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the relationship between uh, Hiroko and Akiba. But all that being said, Hiroko and Akiba, there are some moments with their sequences where it does feel like it actually does have a place in the story especially how Akiba finds a way to really uh get Hiroko to finally let her brother go not her brother it's uh, her uh, boyfriend go to let her husband go you know because she's having a hard time letting go and that's why she sent this letter to this address that she saw in his yearbook. And she started receiving these letters back. So then initially she thought that it was him sending her letters from beyond the grave. But then she finds out that it's not him. It's this other Tsuki Fuji. And through a relationship that she starts to form with uh akiba who she had been off and on again with anyway she finally is able to face the grief head on and let her husband go and that starts the healing process for her and and i i, I like how the script handles that but some of the other stuff is just not really as interesting as the other elements. And because of the fact that you have the same actress playing Itsuki Fuji and Hiroko, there are some times where, admittedly, you do get kind of confused. Also, the two characters are very similar in terms of the way they carry themselves, in terms of the way that they act. And I think that might have been intentional. But at the same time, it's almost a little too much. Because they're too similar of characters. So it would have been interesting to have a little bit more of a difference between the two. Whether it's a, with their appearance or with some of the other uh, aspects and, and parts of their character. And admittedly, some of the other drama is also not as compelling uh, as other bits here and there. There's some stuff going on with, uh, I think it's the parents 
of uh, Hiroko, I think. They're going about trying to get a new place, or they're going to move somewhere. Or, actually, I think that was Atsuki Fuji. I think that's who it was. I could be completely wrong, because there are some times, admittedly, where you do get kind of confused. And I think that really is honestly one of the biggest problems I have with this script, is that it is kind of a little too confusing at times. Uh, and I, I think it could have been a little bit more straightforward in some aspects and, and start of, instead of being a little vague or not really fully realized or fleshed out or having things that just seem too similar to the point where it's hard to tell them apart. But despite some issues overall, I, I, I still think this is a pretty good script the performances by the cast were amazing i thought everyone involved in this cast did a really good job i mean miho nakiyama who played itsuki fuji and hiroko watanabe the it was a very difficult role because she had to play two different parts and i thought she was just absolutely spectacular because she balanced all these parts really well and she tried to give them different personalities and there are some moments where you can tell them apart but I'm not really gonna say any of the instances where I was kind of confused with the characters being something that she's to blame for because she did what she was asked to do and she did a remarkable job with what she had to work with and uh yeah I thought her performance was great and she definitely did deserve whatever awards that she did get for this role very difficult and demanding role and she made it look effortless uh at Sushi Tokiawa as Akiba uh, he was fine too uh, I thought he had some good chemistry with uh, Miho, but it's not one of those things where, oh yeah, he was he was amazing, it was really really great. Like he was he was fine, he was he was decent. Uh, but then again, he's not really the kind of the focus of things most of the time. Um, it's the kind of thing where you you just have a lot of other things that are the focus and there's a lot of other characters that are more of a focus than him as a result. Um, yeah, Bunjuko, uh, Bunjaku Han as, uh, Itsuki Fuji's mom, uh, Katsuki Sinohara as, uh, her grandfather, uh, Miki Sakai as the young, young girl, uh, the young, uh, Itsuki Fuji definitely wanted to point her out because uh, she got a lot of accolades. Like she would, this was one of her first acting roles. I think it was her first acting role, and she also did an excellent job and really made a lot of things seem very effortless as well. Like it was a really uh, nice job by her uh, in terms of bringing that young Itsuki Fuji to life and really showcasing the conflict and the drama that was going on with her and the male Itsuki Fuji in a very compelling and dynamic way. She had some great chemistry with uh, Takayashi uh, Kashibara as the male uh, Itsuki Fuji as well. So that's really the main cast. And even in the very like little brief supporting roles, Everyone did a great job. Everyone was on their A game when it comes to the acting. Now, the cinematography, that's another aspect of this film that is a highlight by no Noboru Shinoda. I mean, there, there are so many shots in this film that you just look at and you're like, that is beautiful. That is a gorgeous looking shot. And I know I've used beautiful and gorgeous numerous times. But there's only so many words for that, and it's perfect. Those words are perfect to describe a lot of the visuals in this film. Uh, it's a very splendid bit of splendor. Uh, it's a very 
impressive film from a visual perspective. And a big part of that is due to uh, the cinematography by Shinoda, as well as a wise vision and how the two meld together so seamlessly. And it has some nice editing by Sunji Iwai too. I mean, wow, triple threat. He does a really remarkable job directing the film and then does a solid job with the screenplay. And then on top of that, you've got some really high quality editing. And it's a film that really did rely upon some high quality edits as well to make everything fit and fit well. Because there's a lot of jumping back and forth between different characters, different timelines, different settings. And the editing just really does help the film flow uh, pretty well uh, overall. Despite the fact that there's all these different things going on. And that there are admittedly some moments where it's a little hard to follow. But it's not something where it's hard to follow for large chunks of the film it's just intermittently hard to follow at times but then it it eventually does find the right path and gets you back uh into things and gets you engaged once again and it's a film that to me kept me captivated for the most part except for the moments where i was kind of just wondering where things were going or what exactly was going on but once the path became a little clearer and a little easier to follow i liked the film i enjoyed the movie uh it has a running time of 117 minutes which is admittedly a little lengthy and there are some times where it does feel a little long but for the most part though it kept me interested enough with the plot and the unique way that it told its story and the strong characters that I didn't really find it to be too boring or too tedious, which is something that really does happen a lot of the time with dramas or romantic dramas. And here's another thing that I really did appreciate about this film is that it is a romantic drama but it never really is too sappy. It's not saccharine sweet. It doesn't have mo- doesn't really have that many moments where it feels like it's straight out of some kind of fantasy romance novel. It feels very grounded in a lot of different ways. And I think that makes it more relatable. And I also think it, it's a big reason why I like the film. Is that it was a standout film in numerous different ways not just because of the striking visuals but because of the fact that it has a story a love story that is tinged with some legitimate somber sadness and tragedy and a fair amount of realism and it even manages to take something that might seem to be something out of the ordinary like sending letters to your deceased husband and then getting letters back and then hoping that the reality is that you're actually getting messages from beyond the grave. I mean, I was even at, uh, I even got to the point with the film where I'm like, you know what? That would be interesting if it actually did go that route, but it didn't go that route. It went in a different route that, I still really liked because of the fact that it was still unique. It was still different. I didn't see it coming. I didn't see there being two Isuki Fujis, uh, one male and one female. I didn't see that coming at all. Like that was a, a, a genuine surprise. And it was one that I definitely did appreciate. And one more thing before I essentially wrap things up when it comes to this movie i want to mention the score by remedios this score is haunting it's just as beautiful as the imagery it's a really nice bit of classical music uh, with some contemporary elements but a lot of it's very much a throwback to classical music 
and sonatas and and those kind of things and it fits the film very well it gives the film in a lot of ways its heart its soul and i would definitely say that it's one of the better scores that i've heard when it comes to this kind of film because a lot of the time when it comes to a romantic drama the score either it's too thick when it comes to the emotion or there's not enough there because i i've heard a lot of scores in these kind of films a lot of them tend to be kind of background noise or they are a little bit too thick when it comes to the emotion so you just have a lot of heavy stuff going on and and i felt this had a lot more variety when it comes to the levels that it was trying to build when it comes to the emotion and as a result, it just made for a really great score. And it elevated the film to a higher level just by itself. So yeah, I, I would say Love Letter is a film that is definitely not going to be for everyone. I think some things might be lost in translation for uh, American viewers. But I would still recommend the film from a pure visual standpoint and just for the fact that it tells the story in a very different unique and genuinely intriguing way and it does it in a fashion that keeps you invested and also is legitimately quite touching and that's something that really speaks to the film's overall quality and to really what the filmmaker and the film's writer I think was trying to get across. I think it does nail the ultimate message that it was trying to deliver. And that's why I think the film was ultimately pretty successful. So anyway, thanks for watching my review of Love Letter and as always I'll see you later. See ya.